Okay, so I've uh, pulled the device apart again, <coughs> and I just want you guys to have a look at this. There may be something in this, there may not be. Maybe a reasonable explanation, I'm not sure. But I wanted to go back and have a look at this again because I just don't understand um, as to how it works. And upon a bit more testing, I also found something else out. Very interesting. So we've just got one of our stators. Um, now all three phases have been wired in parallel here. So we'll have one field shooting out from each segment of our stator. And of course the other field, um, the stator plates are just one full circle. Uh, so um, no brakes like we have on the outside. So the outside field's got brakes in it. Um, no uh, steel magnetic path. But on the inside, like I said, it is one complete steel loop with these steel fingers coming off each plate. And of course laminated plates. So what I'm going to do first is show you that the um, coil windings themselves are totally isolated and not shorted to the steel core and we simply do that with our multimeter. You may have to forgive my camera work, I'm trying to um, do everything one handed here. Uh, yes, that's it. Okay, so if I uh, get my two leads here, and now we join them together, like yay. I'm not making any noise, why am I not? Okay, so I'll set it on ohms. Diode, alright, there's our buzzer. So you can hear that. So what I'm going to do, is hook this onto our soldered join there and if I go to the other side of the coil or the windings which is our green wire coming back to this little circuit I put here you can see that we indeed have continuity however if I touch it on the steel cores see that it is totally isolated and that was just that meter turning off so nothing there at all and once again no problem there and of course on the other end of our yellow wire as well so um, As you can see, totally isolated from the steel core. Nothing there. Alright, so now that we know that that's isolated, um, no shorts from our windings to our core, which is extremely doubtful because um, this plastic insulation, all the coils are wound around, is all one piece. So. Um, once the wires are wound on there, there's really no way it can short out onto there, onto the steel core. What I'm going to go do now is um, switch the camera off so I've got both hands, save a bit of time here, hook everything up, and then I'll go through the setup and then I'll show you what's happening. Um, and there's a couple of interesting things. Alright, so I'll be back shortly. Okay, it's all hooked back up, so we'll run through the system and um, you can see what's going on here. Our power supply is set at 12 volts, about 58 milliamps. Our meter is saying 57, so pretty close. Uh, the ground is going to this pin here, which goes to the emitter, of course. So the power supply ground, which is that green one, clipped to the black lead, is going to the emitter. Our signal generator ground is also going to the emitter. Our scope probe ground is also going to the emitter. And of course, my scope shares a common ground, so this side, um, the negative side of the LED, is also our common ground 
along with every other unit that we're using here. Um, our signal generator, I've been mucking around a bit with the frequency. I've got it set on 12 kilohertz. Um, the more I wind it up, the frequency that is, of course the lower the um, current draw goes, but um, the brighter this LED goes. I've um, had to change one because I blew it out when I hit about 18 kilohertz. We can get that right down to 8 milliamps. Um, the neons go out, not enough inductive kickback to drive them, but our LED of course goes sky high and blows out. Uh, as you see the laminated core is totally isolated from the winding so it's no short it is totally open. Um, on this side I have the scope channel A which is our yellow channel polarity correct across the LED and I'm simply going from the positive side of the LED through our milliamp meter and then that just goes to this side here. The probe on channel 2 or channel B which is our blue channel is hooked onto the collector. I've just got it clipped onto the neons because it won't quite fit over the collector. So um, and that is what you are seeing. Now channel 2 is on 10x setting on the probe. Channel 1 is on 1 times. Neither channel is inverted. So we can show you that now. Invert is off. DC coupling on channel 2. Invert is off. Go back to channel 1 and DC coupling also on channel 1. Well, channel A is set on 5 volts per division and I have dropped it down one division to get it out of channel B which is set at 10 volts per division and 10x on the probe. Um, so you are seeing 10 volts per division. Four volts peak to peak and I have an offset of 1.5 volts. Uh, frequency you already know. Duty cycle is at 50% at the moment. Um, I was running it at 30, I switched over to 50. And Basically, that is the complete setup. So, uh, the neons are shining away. 57 milliamps at 12 volts is what we are drawing at the moment. Like I said, we're set on the milliamp scale. As you can see, reading 0 DC. What I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to touch our... Uh, multimeter probe here on the steel laminates and as you will see when we do that now that LED is extremely bright I'm not sure if the camera is auto darkening or not but it is very hard to look at what I do notice is we are drawing absolutely no current that is connected, that is disconnected and you will notice we go down by about 1 milliamp. I'll connect it back up. Disconnected. So I've moved the um, coil pretty much well out of reach of our magnetic field as you can see there. I'll hook it back up. So we have about 2.6 to 2.7 volts across that LED with roughly an 85% on time. Now 
Now, like I said, it's extremely bright. It's on for 85% of the time. About 2.7 volts across it. But we are drawing nothing. And that is on the milliamp scale, and it does indeed work. This is not one of them joke videos. Everything has been returned to as normal. This is a serious experiment. If it is a um, free energy device replication, I will always tell you and then show you how it was done, but this is a rigid digi experiment. So somehow the core of our um, stator is producing a positive voltage that drives that LED extremely hard, but it has no current. Which is very, very odd. Now, we can get an LED and hook it straight to ground and then positive side to our core and it will glow slightly. However, when we put an inductor in there as you can see it goes much better so I do not know how the LED is running that bright with that many volts across it for that period of time and drawing no current however if I switch my multimeter over to AC, we get 3.74 milliamps. 75. So that's what we have. Somehow, um, getting a positive output from an isolated core. Now, what I did have, wherever I put that, um, I'll try to eliminate, it's over here, I'll just grab it. It's another steel core of a smaller motor. Um, I thought it might have been the core maybe some sort of aerial over a bit. Um, we're still going. But as you can see, there's absolutely nothing. So the core isn't acting as an aerial as such. But um, certainly somehow getting some um, voltage out of the uh, state of core that is totally isolated from the windings and I can keep going up with the frequency uh, input will go down the power to the LED goes up and around 18 kilohertz the LED pops so um, and it will actually drive a small incandescent bulb as well with a um, diode across it or between the ground and the incandescent bulb or of course our probe and the, incan and the uh, state of core but only a very small one so what I will do is while we're running it I will drop it down to, I'll lift it up to 17 kilohertz, and down to 50, our little mounds are still on, and now we're getting, see how bright that is now, it's extremely bright, it does hurt the eyes, 5.08 milliamps 
um, AC and we'll switch it back to DC as you can see we get zero and at that frequency so that is off Speaking between 50, 49, 50 milliamps. And that is on. And that is on. So we can get a AC current across it, but not a DC current. And um, show no reflection on our input power. However, uh, the core is totally isolated. I don't understand as to how we're getting a voltage from that at all. So um, I just wanted to do this experiment and see if anyone's got any explanations. Um, the thought of the uh, TPU and some other experiments you guys have been carrying out with um, cores pulsed at certain frequencies um, with uh, coils wrapped around them of course but um, like I said it's very interesting that we can get a voltage that much um, from an isolated steel core let us know your thoughts, guys. Thanks for watching.